welcome to the thousand nights and one night. Now, when it was the eight hundred and seventh night, she resumed. It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that the old woman questioned Hassan of the girls, company after company, if haply his wife were among them. But as often as she asked him of the troop, he made answer, She is not among these, O my lady. Last of all, there came up a damsel, attended by ten slave girls and thirty waiting women, all of them high-bosomed maidens. They put off their clothes and went down into the river, where the damsel fell to riding the high horse over her women, throwing them down and ducking them. On this wise she continued for a full hour, after which all came up out of the water and sat down, and they brought her napkins of gold purfled silk, with which she dried herself. Then they brought her clothes and jewels and ornaments of the handiwork of the jinn, and she donned them and rose and walked with graceful pace among the troops, she and her maidens. When Hassan saw her, his heart was ready to fly from his breast, and he said, Verily, this girl is the likest of all folk to the bird I saw in the basin atop of the palace of my sisters, the princesses, and she lorded over her leeches, even as doth this one. The old woman asked, O Hassan, is this thy wife? And he answered, No, by thy life, O my lady, this is not my wife, nor ever in my life have I set eyes on her. Neither among all the girls I have seen in this island is there the like of my wife nor her match for symmetry and grace and beauty and loveliness. Then said Shawaki, Describe her to me, and acquaint me with all her attributes, that I may have her in my mind, for I know every girl in the island of Wak, being commander of the army of maids, and governor over them. Wherefore, an thou describe her to me, I shall know her, and will contrive for thee to take her. Quoth he, My wife hath the fairest face, and a form of grace, smooth is she of cheeks and high of breasts with eyes of liquid light calves and thighs plump to sight teeth snowy white with dulcet speech tight and speech soft and bland as she wore a willow wand her gifts are moral and lips are red as coral her eyes wear natural cold dye and her lower labi in softness lie on her right cheek is a mole and on her waist, under her navel, is a sign. Her face shines as the rondeur of the moon and sheen. Her waist is slight, her hips, a heavy weight, and the water of her mouth the sick doth heal, as it were kasur or salaspil, said the old woman. Give me an increased account of her. Allah increase thee of passion for her, quoth he. My wife hath a face the fairest fair and oval cheeks the rarest rare neck long and spare and eyes that coal wear her face side face shows the anemones of nuuman her mouth is like a seal of cornelian and flashing teeth that lure and stand one instead of cup and oar she is cast in the mould of pleasantness and between her thighs is the throne of the caliphate there is no such sanctuary among the holy places as saith in its praise the poet the name of what drave me distraught hath letters renowned among men a four into five multiplied and a multiplied six into ten that his son wept and chanted the following mawal o heart and lover faults thee shun the parting bane nor to forgetfulness thy thoughts constrain be patient thou shalt bury all thy foes Allah ne'er falseth man of patience fain, and this also. And was be lifelong safe, vaunt not delight, never despair nor warn, overjoyed and sprite. Forbear, rejoice not mourn, nor o'er thy plight, and an ill day have not we opt? Recite. Thereupon the old woman bowed her head, grounds for it a while, then raising it said, Laud be the Lord of Almighty award, indeed I am afflicted with thee, O Hassan. <coughs> Excuse me. Would heaven I had never known thee, this woman whom thou describest to me as thy wife, I know by description, and I know her to be none other than the eldest daughter of the supreme king, she who ruleth over all the island of Wak. So open both eyes and consider thy case, and if thou be asleep, awake, for if this woman be indeed thy wife, it is impossible for thee to ever obtain her. 
and though thou come to her, yet couldst thou not avail to her possession, since between thee and her the distance is as that between earth and heaven. Wherefore, O my son, return presently, and cast not thyself into destruction, nor cast me with thee. For me seemest thou hast no lot in her, so return whence thou camest, lest our lives be lost. And she feared for herself and for him. When Hassan heard her words, he wept till he fainted, and she left not sprinkling water on his face till he came to himself. When he continued to weep, so that he drenched his dress with tears for much cark and care and chagrin which betided him by reason of her words. And indeed, he despaired of life and said to the old woman, O oh, my lady, and how shall I go back after having come hither? Verily I thought not thou would forsake me, nor fail of the winning of my wish, especially as thou art the commander-in-chief of the army of the girls. Answer Shawahai, O my son, I doubted not but thy wife was a maid of the maids, and had I known she was the king's daughter, I had not suffered thee to come hither, nor had I shown the troops to thee for all the love I bear thee. But now, O my son, thou hast seen all the girls naked, so tell me which of them pleases thee, and I will give her to thee in lieu of thy wife, and do thou put it that thy wife and children are dead, and take her and return to thine own country in safety, ere thou fall into the king's hand, and I have no means of delivering thee. So Allah, upon thee, O my son, hearken unto me, choose thyself one of these damsels in the stead of yonder woman, and return presently to thy country in safety, and cause me not quaff the cup of thine anguish. For by Allah thou hast cast thyself into affliction sore, and peril galore, wherefrom none may avail to deliver thee evermore. But Hassan hung down his head, and he wept with long weeping, and he recited these couplets. Blame not, said I to all who blamed me, mine eyelids not, but tears were made to dree. The tears that brim these orbs have overflowed, my cheeks for lovers and love's cruelty. Leave me to love through the waste this form of me, for I of love adore the insanity. And, oh, my dearling, passion grows on me. For you and you, why grudge me clemency? You wrong me after swearing troth and plight, false my companionship and turn to flee, and cup of humbling for your rigorous sore. Ye may me drain what day departed ye, then melt, O oh, heart, with longing for their sight and all mine eyes with crowns of tears be dight. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. Now, when it was the eight hundred and eighth night, she said, It hath reached me, O auspicious king, that when the old woman said to Hassan, By Allah, O my son, hearken to my words. Choose thee one of these girls in lieu of thy wife, and presently return to thy country in safety. He hung down his head and recited the couplets quoted above. Then he wept till he swooned away, and Shawahai sprinkled water on his face till he revived, when she addressed him, O oh my lord, I have no shift left, because if I carry thee to the city, thy life is lost, and mine also. For when the queen cometh to know of this, she will blame me for admitting thee into her lands and islands, whereto none of Adam's sons hath access, and will slay me for bringing thee with me, and for suffering mortal to look upon the virgins seen by thee in the sea, whom ne'er touched male, neither approached mate. And Hassan swore that he had never looked on them with evil of eye. She resumed, O oh, my son, Hearken to me, and return to thy country, and I will give thee wealth and treasures and things of price, such as shall suffice thee for all women in the world. Moreover, I will give thee a girl of the best of them. So lend an ear to my words, and return presently, and imperil not thyself. Indeed, I counsel thee with good counsel. But he wept, and he rubbed both cheeks against her feet, saying, O oh, my lady and mistress, and cooleth of mine eyes, how can I turn back now that have made my way hither without the sight of those I desire. And now that I have come near the beloved sight, hoping for meeting forthright, so happily there may be a portion and reunion to my plight. And he improvised these couplets. O kings of beauty, grace to prisoners tain, of eyelids fit to rule the costero's reign. 
you pass the wafts of musk and perfumed breath your cheeks the charms of blooming rose disdain the softest zephyr breeze where pitch ye camp and thence far scattered sweetness fills the plain censure of me leave blame and stint advice thou bringest weary words and wisdom vain why heat my passion with this flame and up brave me when not thou knowest of its bane Capture my eyes with passion, molatives, and overthrow me with love's might and main. I scatter tears, the while I scatter verse. You are my theme for rhyme and prosy strain. Melted my vitals glow of rosy cheeks, and in the laza low in heart is lain. Tell me, and I leave to discourse of you, what speech my breast shall broaden. Tell me, dine. Life long I love the lovelings fair, but ah, to grant my wish, eek Allah must be fain. Hearing these verses, the old woman was moved to Ruth for him, and Allah planted the seed of affection for him in her heart. So coming up to him, she consoled him, saying, Be of good cheer, and keep thine eyes cool and clear, and put away trouble for thy thought, for by Allah I will venture my life with thee till thou attain thine aim, or death unto me. With this, Hassan's heart was comforted, and his bosom broadened, and he sat talking with the old woman till the end of the day, when all the girls dispersed, some entering their town mansions and others nighting in the tents. Then the old woman carried him into the city, and lodged him in a place apart, lest any one should come to know of him, and tell the queen of him, and she should slay him, and slay her who had brought him thither. Moreover, she served him herself, and strave to put him in fear of the awful majesty of the supreme king, his wife's father, whilst he wept before her and said, O oh, my lady, I choose death for myself, and loathe this worldly life, if I foregather not with my wife and children. I have set my existence on the venture, and will either attain my aim or die. So the old woman fell to pondering the meanings of bringing him and his wife together, and casting about how to do in the case of this unhappy one, who had thrown himself into destruction, and would not be diverted from his purpose by fear or aught else. For indeed, he recked not of his life, and the sayer of Bywood saith, Lover in no wise hearkeneth he to the speech of the man who is in fancy free. Now the name of the queen of the island wherein they were was Nur al Huda eldest daughter of the supreme king and she had six virgin sisters abiding with their father whose capital and court were in the chief city of that reign and who had made her ruler over all the lands and islands of wak so when the ancient dame saw hassan on fire with yearning after his wife and children she rose up and repaired to the palace and going in to queen nur al huda kissed ground before her for she had claim on her favor because she had reared the king's daughters one and all and had authority over each and every one of them and was high in honor and consideration with them and with the king nur al huda rose unto her as she entered and embracing her seated her by her side and asked her of her journey she answered by allah o oh my lady twas a blessed journey and i have brought thee a gift which i will presently present to thee adding, O oh, my daughter, O oh, queen of the age and the time, I have a favor to crave of thee, and I fain would discover it to thee, that thou mayest help me to accomplish it, and but for my confidence that thou wilt not gainsay me therein, I would not expose it to thee. Asked the queen, And what is thy need? Expound it to me, and I will accomplish it to thee, for I and my kingdom and troops are all in thy commandment and disposition." Therewithal the old woman quivered as quivered the reed on a day when the storm wind is abroad, and saying in herself, O protector, protect me from the queen's mischief, fell down before her and acquainted her with the son's case, saying, O my lady, a man who had hidden himself under my wooden settle on the seashore sought my protection. So I took him under my safeguard and carried him with me among the army of girls armed and accrued so that none might know him, and brought him into the city, and indeed I have striven to affright him, and thy fierceness, given him to know of thy power and prowess, but as often as I threatened him, he weepeth and reciteth verses, and saith, Needs must I have my wife and children, or die, and I will not return to my country without them. 
and indeed he hath adventured himself and come to the island of walk and never in all my days saw a mortal heartier of heart than he or daughter daughtery of daring do save that love hath mastered him to the utmost of mastery and shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day and ceased to say her permitted say now when it was the eight hundred and ninth night she said it hath reached me o auspicious king that when the old woman related to queen nur al huda the adventures of hassan ending with never i saw any one heartier of heart than he say that love which have mastered him to the utmost of mastery the queen after lending an attentive ear and comprehending the case waxed wroth at her with exceeding wrath and bowed her bowed her head a while groundwards then raising it she looked at shawahai and said to her o oh, ill omen beldam art thou come to such a pass of lewdness that thou carriest males men with thee into the island of wak and bringest them into me unfearing of my mischief who hath foregone thee with this fashion that thou shouldest do this by the head of the king but for thy claim on me for fosterage and service i would forthright do both him and thee to die the foulest of death that travellers might take warning by thee o oh, accursed lest any other do the like of this outrageous deed thou hast done which none durst hitherto but go and bring him hither forthright that i may see him or i will strike off thy head o oh, accursed so the old woman went out from her, confounded, unknowing whether she went, and saying, All this calamity hath Allah driven upon me from this queen because of Hassan. And going in to him, said, Rise, speak with the queen, O white, whose last hour is at hand. Almighty Allah, and say, O oh my God, be gracious to me in thy decrees, and deliver me from this thine affliction. And Sawahai went with him, charging him by the way how he should speak with the queen. When he stood before Nur al Huda, he found that she had donned a chin veil, so he kissed ground before her and saluted her with the salam, improvising these two couplets God make thy glory last in joy of life, Allah confirm the boons he died bestow. Thy grace and grandeur may our Lord increase, and I, the Almighty, did thee, O thy foe. When he hinted his verse, Nur al Huda bade the old woman ask him questions before her, that she might hear his answers. So she said to him, The queen returneth thy salam greeting, and saith to thee, What is thy name, and that of thy country, and what are the names of thy wife and children, on whose account thou art come hither? Quoth he, And indeed, he had made firm his heart, and destiny aided him. O queen of the age, and tide peerless, jewel of the epic and the time my name is hassan the fulfilled of sorrow and my native city is basara i know not the name of my wife but my children's names are nasir and mansur when the queen heard his reply in his province she bespoke him herself and said and whence took she the children he replied o queen she took from the city of baghdad and the palace of the caliphate Quoth Nur al Huda, and did she say not to thee at the time she flew away? And quoth he, Yes. She said to my mother, When as thy son cometh to thee, and the nights of severance upon him longsome shall be, and he craveth meeting and reunion to see, and when as breezes of love and longing shake him dolefully, let him come to me in the islands of Wak. Whereupon Queen Nur al Huda shook her head and said to me, had she not desired thee, she had not said to thy mother this say, and had she not yearned for reunion with thee, never had she been thee to her stead, nor acquainted thee with our abiding place. Rejoined Hassan, O mistress of kings and, and asylums of prince and pauper, what so happened I have told thee, and I have concealed naught thereof, and I take refuge from evil with Allah and with thee, wherefore oppress me not but have compassion on me, and earn recompense and requital for me in the world to come, and aid me to regain my wife and children. Grant me my urgent need, and cool mine eyes and my children, and help me to the sight of them. Then he wept, 
and he wailed, and he lamented his lot, reciting these two couplets. Yea, I will laud thee while the ring dove mows, through fail my wish of due and lawful scope. Ne'er was I world in bliss and joys gone by, wherein I found thee naught but ruth and rope. The queen shook her head and bowed it in long, thoughtful time, and then raising it, she said to her son, indeed she was wroth, I have ruth on thee, and I am resolved to show thee in review all the girls in the city and in the provinces of my island, and in case thou know thy wife, I will deliver her to thee, but an thou know her not, and know not her place, I will put thee to death, and crucify thee over the old woman's door replied to son i accept this from thee o queen of the age and i am content to submit to this thy condition there is no majesty and there is no might save in all of the glorious the great and he recited these couplets you've roused my desire and remain at rest waked my wounded lids while you slept with zest and you made me vow ye would not hang back but your guile when you chained me waxed manifest i loved you in childhood unknowing love then slay me not who am sore oppressed. Fear ye not from Allah when slaying a friend, who gazeth on stars when folks slept their best. By Allah, my kinsmen indict me on my tomb. This man was a slave of love's harshest heist. Have some noble youth like me, love's own thrall, when he sees my grave on my name shall call. Then Queen Nur al Huda commanded that not a girl should abide in the city, but should come up to the palace and pass in review before Hassan, and moreover she bade Shawahai go down in person and bring them up herself. Accordingly, all the maidens in the city presented themselves before the queen, who caused them to go into Hassan hundred after hundred, till there was no girl left in the palace, but she had shown her to him, yet he saw not his wife amongst them. Then said she to him, Seest thou here among these? And he replied, By thy life, O queen, she is not amongst them. With this, she was sore enraged against him, and said to the old woman, Go in and bring out all who are in the palace, and show them to him. So she displayed to them every one of the palace girls. But he saw not his wife among them, and he said to the queen, By the life of thy head, O queen, she is not among these. Whereat the queen was wroth, and cried out to those surrounding her, Take him, and hale him along face to earth, and cut off his head, lest any adventure himself after him and intrude upon us in our country, and spy out our estate by thus treading the soil of our island. So they threw him down on his face, and dragged him along, then covering his eyes with his skirt, stood at his head with bared brands, awaiting royal permission." Thereupon, Sawahai came forward, and kissing the ground before the queen, took the hem of her garment, and laid it on her head, saying, O queen, by my claim of fosterage, be not hasty with him, more by token of thy knowledge, and that this poor wretch is a stranger, who hath adventured himself, and suffered none ever suffered before him, and Allah, to whom belong might and majesty, preserved him from death, for that his life was ordained to be long. He heard of thine equity, and entered thy city and guarded sight. Wherefore, if thou put him to death, the report will to spread among these, by means of travellers, that thou hatest strangers, and slayest them. He is in any case at thy mercy, and the slain of thy sword. If his wife be not found in thy dominions, and whensoever thou desirest his presence, I can bring him back to thee. Moreover, in very sooth, I took him under my protection only of my trust in thy magnanimity, through my claim on thee for fosterage, so that I engaged to him that thou wouldest bring him to his desire from my knowledge of thy justice and quality of mercies. But for this I had not brought him into thy kingdom, for I said to myself, The queen will take pleasure in looking upon him, in hearing him speak his verses, and his sweet discourses, and eloquent, which is like unto pearls, strung on string." Moreover, he hath entered our land, and eaten of our meat, wherefore he hath claim upon us. And Shahrazad perceived the dawn of the day, and ceased to say her permitted say. And so do I cease my telling of this tale, till it be morrow. <laughs>